Greetings and welcome to the Greatness Factor podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and property consultant, Tinashe C. Munanda. On this podcast, we'll be focusing on the ideas that can help you maximize and unlock the personal potential that is within to become the greatest version of yourself. So sit back and relax and enjoy our content as we delve into the Greatness Factor. Stay blessed. Hi guys, welcome to the one, the only, the Greatness Factor podcast. Uh, if you are visiting us for the first time, please do me a favor. Just uh, smash the subscribe button, like and comment. That would really help us with the algorithm as we are on the road to a thousand subscribers. Without further ado, allow me to uh, welcome again on the podcast, Bishop Vukani Lala. How are you, sir? Thank you so much for um, having me today. Mm. No, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Um, the last time you were here, we were talking about offenses, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the body of Christ. Yeah. So it would not do justice if we just talk about the offenses, but not also talk about the healing process. Okay. So why is it very important for people to invest in their healing? Well, it's, 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 it's important to invest in your healing because whenever you are offended, mm. people have a habit of creating campsites mm. around their offense. In other words, they, they don't want to move from there. Mm. So when you create a campsite, with time, you start having a position okay. of perception. Okay. In other words, you're now seeing things from a position. You're no longer seeing things in their clarity. Mm -hmm. So let's say you were abused financially by a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever a preacher stands up and they want to collect an offering, and there's nothing wrong with collecting an offering, mm -hmm. you might actually walk out. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, here we go again. They steal people's money. No, no, th this one is not stealing anyone's money. But you now have a position. Okay. You know, if you if you abused in a relationship as a Christian, and uh, maybe it caused serious heartbreak, and you camp around the heartbreak, you get to a place where you now have a position. Mm. All men are dogs. All men are cruel. Or whatever. So whoever is talking about family, it's not even getting in. You have a position. You are you are viewing things from the lens of your offense. You are no longer viewing things in the purity of what they could be. Okay. So if you camp around an offense, mm -hmm. you'll end up having a position. And once you have a position, your understanding of the world, your understanding of life will now be twisted. Okay. So that's why somebody has to embark on the path to healing. All right. So I, I, I feel like this topic of healing is a broad concept because mm. we, if we only limit it to healing in the circles of, of faith in, in, in the body of Christ, we'll not do justice to the topic. Okay. There's also damages that come even uh, outside the, the church context. Mm. Um, damage from relationships, damage from uh, family. Mm. So it's, it, it, I think even it would that what you have just said would that also change or is the same prescription even in 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 damage that comes from relationships maybe uh, abuse as a as a young child or or you went through a, a, a relationship that just broke you and now you 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 can't see this would that same sub subscription is uh, prescription apply well there is no one size fits all okay why because the contexts mm. of offense or hurt, they are different. Okay. They are different. Um, <clears throat> let me give you an example. Let's say somebody always experiences what they feel to be rejection. Mm. You know, wherever they go, they end up being elbowed mm. out of deals or they end up being sidelined. And they're always being rejected. They're always being rejected. They're always being rejected sometimes when you see things like that the individual needs to press the stop button mm -hmm. and introspect okay because many a time there could be a posture of the heart 
that now acts as a magnet to this rejection. Mm. Let me explain what I mean. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart is the subconscious mind part of the human mind. It's actually the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is programmable by different means. Uh, number one, it could be biological. There's a process called phoneme communication uh, that they believe that, you know, when a woman is pregnant, whatever is happening in the outside world to the mother can actually be recorded in the subconscious mind of the baby. Wow. But it's still being debated. Okay. Then there's another, the after biological, there is uh, what we call significant others. Significant others are your parents or your siblings. Mm. So the way they raise you and grow up with you can actually program your subconscious mind. Let's say they used to call you useless, stupid, useless, stupid. All of them, you, you're dumb, you're clumsy and so forth. It actually becomes part of your programming. You somewhat believe that you're stupid. You somewhat believe that you're slow. But where did you get that from? You got it from the significant people in your life. Mm. Then there is the environmental or societal, mm. uh, where somebody's raised maybe in the ghetto or they are raised in, uh, in a drug infested area or whatever. They can end up behaving a certain way mm. because of the way that they've been programmed. Then there's life experiences, especially the negative ones, heartbreaks and whatever, abuse and so forth and so on. That could have happened between the ages of three mm. and the ages of 12 because that is the critical formative stage of a person. Okay. Now, through all these programming mechanisms, let's say somebody picked up low self-esteem along the way and they have a position in their heart that I'm inferior, I'm pathetic, I'm a failure. Likelihood of manifesting uh, circumstances or scenarios that feel like rejection is going to be very high. And then when that happens, they'll be like, you see, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm pathetic, I'm a failure. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If this person thinks that they are a failure and they are pathetic, as they relate with people, things will just happen that will lead to them being you know labeled or ostracized as a failure mm. it's it's i'm sure you've heard people say this always happens to me this always happens to me the only way it can stop is when they look inside to see if there is no negative proclivity or negative pro uh, affinity or negative position in their heart that could be attracting this drama mm. remember in the bible job says the thing that i feared the most has befallen me job had a phobia he had a fear of loss mm. and guess what at one time the the loss actually started taking place mm. so if we are to get into the path of healing we need to understand the context there are some people that have positions in the subconscious mind that need to be confronted and dealt with so that the cycle or the repetitive cycle of certain events stops in their lives. Mm. Yeah, um, I'll give you um, an example of my own life. I used to be very, I used to have a very strong sense of inadequacy. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. So I'd go to places and somewhat life would play out to show that I'm not good enough. Mm. Things would just happen that you end up being like the laughing stock. Mm. But when I started confronting that thing, that don't know, I don't need to be good enough for anybody, I am good, you know. And I started um, confessing that over my life and doing all sorts of exercises, which we'll deal with later on as, as we discuss. And I started feeling good about myself. I ended up being treated well mm. because I had to look inside. Okay. So there, there is that grouping of people that know you have a problem in your heart that needs to be dealt with. Hmm. So that's one group of people. Their type of healing, the prescription has to be tailor-made along those lines. Then they could be people who just went through unfortunate circumstances. Now those ones, you can't say they attracted it. Hmm. Let's say war victims. Yeah, you know the the mm. abuses of war, the rape of war, and it just happened. Mm. Those ones again, their prescription could be slightly different. Although we can borrow one or two things from another context, but it will be slightly different because they didn't bring that upon themselves. Mm. That's stuff that just 
happened. Okay. Yes. Right. Then, uh, then there's another context maybe of people who do certain things which attracts maybe revenge or a backlash. Then they get hurt. Mm. You know, we need to to analyze. You know, why are you provocative? Why do you always start drama? Because if we don't deal with why they always start drama, we're not going to be able to deal with the effects of the drama that they start. Because the effects, that's where they get hurt, they get disappointed, they get frustrated, they feel like, ah, you know. So so the contexts are different. We, we cannot just say, this is the way to get healed from, from hurt. No. We have to listen to the story of how somebody got hurt, then we determine which cluster do they fit in. Yeah. All right, as you are speaking, I, I I feel like you have opened a can of worms. <laughs> there are a lot of things and a lot of threads. Yeah. So you said something about uh, the family being part of the trauma. Yeah. Where they are saying, I oh you're useless, ah Benzremunu, Fananana Baba, you know, yeah. these negative languages. Yeah. So in my mind I'm thinking the how can maybe this uh, someone who's in a situation like that and they are in an environment both in an environment that has the family that's uh, responsible for the trauma is there how can that be handled uh, maybe there's a parent who's who's realizing what ah, maybe the way i've i've been doing this is wrong i speak the the wrong kind of words to the family to to my kids and they are watching this and they are re repenting how can they go about uh changing the narrative in that situation where you know there's a there's negative language and they are feeding the children the wrong things well one of the challenges that we have in the african continent is that we have not placed value on mental health mm. because if we had an awareness and a consciousness of mental health such a setting requires group family therapy mm -hmm. where the whole family is subjected to therapy okay you know when that happens you might actually then realize certain things mm -hmm. i'll give examples of our parents because of the war of liberation oh. most of them grew up um during their formative years uh, there was a lot of harsh difficult you know um circumstances for them to get by if you hear their stories of how some of them moved from the rural areas to come into harare uh and started doing menial jobs and things if you hear their stories be like whoa you know they, they they really went through you know tough things so when they relate they relate from their place of pain mm. so when they see you wake up and you're flipping channels on <laughs> tv like this stupid boy you know get go to the garden because that's what they used to do uh -huh. but when you now do family therapy you realize no these parents of ours they grew up in trauma mm -hmm. you know that's when you culture can of trauma. your culture of trauma that's when the child can now begin to sort of like forgive that you know what they grew up in what in trauma, trauma. Mm -hmm. so now it creates a ground for apologies and for reconciliation while that is happening now we then deal with the victims of the trauma of the parents that you know you also now need to flush out those words from your heart while these ones are now also changing the way they are talking so group family therapy, therapy. would help but um, i guess it's uh, imagine going to your dad saying i, I just brought a shrink <laughs> I brought a shriek or a psychiatrist or a psychologist to talk to us. You'd be like, stupid boy, get out, of, get out of my house. Do you think I'm crazy? So so it won't work. Yeah, that would be difficult. So I would then speak to the children who are under such circumstances that they need to invest a lot in positive self-talk. Mm. Uh, yeah, and do it with... Uh, a consistency, a persistence, and to some extent an intensity. So that even as their souls come to the soul, they get to a place where they don't... They, they're, they're governized. They're, from, yeah, you know, they're right? governized. They, they, yeah, because you, you're, you're literally like reorienting your system that I am intelligent. I am intelligent. I am intelligent. The positive self-talk 
at a certain time will begin to influence behavior. Okay. You actually start behaving successful or behaving intelligent. Okay. Nobody's going to do it for you. It's a, it's a work you have to do. It's a work you have to do. That's why I tell people that if somebody says you're a dog, mm. then you get depressed. Mm. It means that person confirmed something that you told wow. yourself prior. Wow. So if somebody labels you yeah. something, but you have a different recording in your heart, you can easily laugh it off or you can even talk back in a respectable way mm. that I'll not accept your words. Mm. You know, I've one of my friends... Uh, he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's a strong character. I think he was in a shop and an elderly lady was talking to him and said something like, you don't think or something like that. She said, ma'am, please take back those words. Mm. I think. Respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. And the woman was like, so yeah, take, take back those words. And the woman had to apologize. Because it means you, you, you have spoken to yourself long enough so well that when anything foreign, alien to how you view yourself comes, you reject it. You're developing an antivirus software by positive self-talk. Mm. Yeah. That's what you'll be doing. Wonderful, wonderful. I like, I, like, I like what you said that if you find yourself being depressed by what someone says, it's yeah. actually a confirmation of what you tell yourself. Yourself, yeah. Ish. That's why you find in the Bible an interesting story of the Syrophoenician woman it says, please heal my daughter, blah, 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 blah. And so there was a, a thing about tribes where the, the Jews would not really interact with the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. And they used to call, I think, the Samaritans dogs or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus, being a Jew, said, ah, we cannot give the children's bread mm -hmm. to dogs. Mm -hmm. So that was a slur, you know. <laughs> the woman continued to pester Jesus for healing. Mm. Jesus is like, whoa, I've not seen faith like this before. Mm. You know, after being said, we'll not give the children's bread to dogs, you'd have walked away. So I'm a dog. But the woman said, even the dogs, mm. they eat the crumbs from their master's table and continued to pester Jesus for the healing. So she, she wasn't perturbed by this whole cultural um, beef or rift between the Jews and the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. She wanted healing and she went for the healing and she got the healing for the daughter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just, just to go back to <clears throat> something you said, I, I, I just want to comment. It, it seems like you were saying that um, if I was to take a, a shrink to my, to my father, they would say... <laughs> and so so it's it's like in in africa we we actually don't believe in what it we have a culture of trauma but we don't believe in trauma what would you say about that um trauma is there um and if you express that you have felt trauma mm. um, you are labeled as being soft mm. and that's not right because your vulnerability is actually part of your healing process mm. yeah you we, we can't we can't create a scenario where all the time we 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 project like you gotta be strong you gotta be hard you gotta be strong you gotta be, I want to cry. You have to cry. You see? So all of those issues are ignorance around mental health. Mm. We don't have a place. Okay. For example, in the developed world, almost every school, primary or high school, has a school psychologist. Mm. Mm. Right? Where they can even do assessments at early stages that this child is being abused at home. They can tell. This child is, they can tell, you know. And even the teachers, one of the serious modules that they do is on child psychology mm. because mental health is a big deal. Do you know that we've got many kids um, here in Zimbabwe? Um, um, I, I, I don't want to really, I'll just, I won't mention names or places, whatever, but there was a kid right who was in school and i think they had autism okay 
now kids with autism sometimes they they're challenged and they can have certain um obsessive behaviors towards something mm. so this kid loved water a lot okay. water water but because they bypassed um the tests um, what do you call this test i keep forgetting their their name that you can assess a child child assessment Psycho- psychometric metric, tests yeah. and so forth to, to do a, a assessment the kid was never assessed and was put in a normal school normal class with normal kids mm-hmm. but this kid has this problem mm-hmm. so teacher goes on a tea break mm-hmm. and the kid walked out went to the swimming pool jumped into Ooh. the water and drowned but it's something that you know it was hush 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 but the truth of the matter is that uh, this child if they'd gone through those psychometric child assessment tests whatever would have determined that there is a psychological problem here let's put this child in a special school or special skills learning school so in in zimbabwe or africa we don't invest in that matimoni matimoni <laughs> where china these <laughs> are schizophrenia <laughs> yes these are spirits or whatever <laughs> so as a result with time we actually have serious problems that now go on for a lifetime where mental health is not valued mental health is not talked about mental health is all these suicides those are mental health issues manic episodes where people maybe start stripping clothes in town and shouting at everybody then after maybe some minutes they come back to normal Mm. all of those are outbursts of somebody who has been brooding over some serious hurt whatever these are mental health problems mm. you know these are mental health the alcoholism uh, drug abuse all of those things those are manifestations or symptomatic problems of people that have psych issues mm. but nobody's placing value on mental health so because of that we have these assumptions or positions you need to be strong you need to be a man I remember the last time we did a men's conference uh, we were saying that everybody wants to be a man but the man that you want to be is a myth that was mm. created by society mm. yeah men don't cry mm. men are tough men are so because they don't want to be seen crying they will hang themselves and that's uh, that has been the trend over that the years that has been the trend over yeah. the years it's either that ano sungira kana dano ma poison or ano zura ora if it's a relationship ano vaura ene munhu yes wow these are mental health issues we need serious um uh, investment in that very serious investment in that yeah okay so you you also said something that uh, something about people that go through experiences that are beyond their control yeah like being raped as a child or parents die and you you are you, you are raised in a verbally abusive environment uh they i've found that people that go through that experience they have a they have a challenge owning up to to that uh experience they they tend to not see beyond that situation and believe that they can become something yeah. more than the situation that was presented to them yeah so i'm just thinking about some someone who might be watching who's, who who has gone through some uh, external uh, experience that they didn't have control over yeah how can those people be helped in your in your own opinion as as a as a as a man of god and someone who actually does counseling well I'd highly recommend high on my list they need to talk to a survivor okay yeah there is always somebody who survived that stuff true and you might not have access to that person but because of the way society is wired up these days people are recording their stories on youtube mm. yeah so as you can google survivor of rape survivor of war crimes talk to a survivor you know and 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 it does something you know it does something i remember this clip where i saw somebody saying uh be very much afraid of people that haven't failed mm. because that person cannot tell you anything true yeah true, they, true. they they cannot tell you anything so survivors um they i believe they are powerful i can't put enough words to that but talking to a survivor 
a survivor of bullying, a survivor of, of rape, a survivor of child molestation, it is extremely powerful to listen to a survivor. Mm. That's one thing that I would say. Uh, secondly, uh, psychotherapy is critical. They need to uh, invest a lot in talk therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, with with a professional, not just with anybody, but mm -hmm. with a professional. Okay. If they cannot afford professionals, I'd recommend that they see their pastors. But that depends if the pastor is trained mm -hmm. for Christian counseling and Christian psychological counseling. If they're not, uh, they might just say, "No, there's a spirit in your." Yeah, <laughs> there's a spirit I'll, in your family. You know <laughs> yeah, you, you need to be delivered. <laughs> there's a spirit that brought that upon you. No, 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 no. So. So they, they can see a pastor, but the whole idea is talk therapy. Then, of course, while we're still on that tangent, um, they themselves, they need to understand that life is episodic. Mm. Yeah, it's episodes. When you're watching a, a series on TV, it has episodes. Mm. And no matter how exciting the episode is, it's gone. No matter how sad and heartbreaking, like when the person you thought was the main actor dies, <laughs> the episode is gone. Yes. And these movie producers, they have a way of flipping the thing around where you start idolizing another main actor. Sure. Before you know it, you even forget that this one, you know, there's a series... The South African series, I know we're not allowed to mention names because of um, <laughs> rights and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But there's one where they fired the entire cast wow. in South Africa. Then they changed the cast. <laughs> People are still watching it. It goes on. Yeah, it goes on. But for me, when they changed the cast, I don't want to watch it again. Because <laughs> I was used to the old one. And people are actually watching it. Mm. Life is episodic. There's good episodes, bad episodes, heartbreaking episodes, betrayal episodes, episodes, episodes. It's life. Mm. That's why the Bible says, I have called heaven and earth as a witness against you this day that I've put before you life and death, mm. blessing and curse. Look at these two things. They are opposites. One is positive, one is negative. negative. Yeah. So I've placed before you life and death and blessing and curse. And then he says, choose life. In other words, he's saying, you need to decide to gravitate towards the positive side. Because if you stay on the negative side, you're hurting yourself. True. So life is episodic. That's why the wise man Solomon says, seasons come, seasons go. go. People mm. come, people go. Then time he talks about time, time, time to, to die. die, time to build, time to destroy. Yeah, yeah it's episodes. Mm. And these are truths <laughs> that almost feel like one has no empathy. Mm. That's why I said, first of all, talk to survivors. There are people that when you hear their story, this is what they are doing and what they have become. You're like, no, it, it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> you were born a champion. But no, they overcame. They mm. realized that, you know what? Life is in episodes. Mm. It's, it's, I just think it's something that we need to face at one go. That life is in what? Episodes. episodes. I was talking to somebody uh, that got into a mishap. And they crushed someone's car and... The person is harassing them and so forth. You know, so when it happened, it, ah, why me? Ah, ah. And I said, accidents happen. Mm -hmm. Move. So today they said, but you know what? I looked on the other side. I didn't get hurt in the accident. I didn't die in the accident. I was carrying my son in that, in that accident. Mm -hmm. My son wasn't hurt. It's just a car. It's just a car. And I said, that's what I'm saying. But when you talk to somebody at that point, they're like, you are mean. You don't have empathy. But I'm trying to tell you, as you grow and mature in life, you realize that life happens in episodes. Mm -hmm. That's why some people, as they succeed, we start saying he's brutal, he's ruthless. No, they're not ruthless. They're realizing that, hey, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah. So that's why we can't dwell on. We can't dwell on because on that note, because uh, I, I've 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 realized people that have some people, most people that have gone through very intense traumatic experiences, even the what even the least, they they take a victim mentality. Mm. They are always the person who 
oh, I, why is this happening to me? Mawana, I say, and you, and they want people to understand and accept them like that. All right, do you know what that is? One of my good friends, um, Bishop Euro, said, when people create campsites mm. around their pain and they dwell there, they don't want to move. They end up looking for cellmates. Mm. It's a jail. Yeah. yeah, it's a jail. And so when they go for counseling, whatever, they are soliciting for cellmates. So they, they want to take you down that path. That's why they always say, you know, me, my life. I was dealing with somebody that said, um, yeah, you know, the, the crying we've heard it, uh, for too long. Stop. <laughs> yeah, stop. It's, it's now boring. Yeah, <laughs> stop. Because <laughs> I have the relationship to talk to that person that, that way. Yeah. yeah, stop being a victim. Mm. Yeah. Let's, let's move. Mm. And after that, she says, ah, but what you're saying actually makes sense. Because I, I say to them, okay, you, you keep repeating this story. You keep repeating this story. I have a question mm. for you. Mm. So what? Mm. But I mean, you cannot talk to someone like that if you don't have a relationship a with them. Yeah, yeah. So, so what? Mm. You know, so what? What What about the kid in, uh, in, 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 in what you call this? in Islamabad, where, 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 where yeah, they're yeah. having war, I, it's the names that confuse me. Yeah. What about the kid who's just been blown off by the shell of a bomb and their leg is gone and their parents have died? Is the, you know, are, are you are you in that such a situation? It's different. Uh, no, but uh, what about, what about, what about, what about? Then you realize, so what? Let's keep mm, on moving. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. let's keep on moving. I had a miscarriage. I lost my baby. Oh my baby! Uh, what about the barren woman? Who oh, never had a baby. They can't conceive, but they want. But they can't conceive. What about the woman who died while giving birth? If they and the baby died, what? You know what I mean? So sometimes you're like, you know what? Let me shake this off. Keep moving. Just keep moving and keep reaching. For the future you know you know you've you've uh, said something I, I i recently adopted a technique of dealing with stress but i'm i'm sure someone with trauma can also use that i put things in pers into perspective <clears throat> i'm going through a tough situation and then i start going back and thinking but I've, I've i've went through worse i've went through this i've went through this. so this too shall pass yeah so i think in in the in that same regard you are also saying that people who have gone through who are going through traumatic experiences also need to put things into perspective yes what am i learning from this you know what am i gaining from this uh, am i getting better at something am i you know sometimes you see my status is i just write wiser mm. stronger mm. better mm. i'll be going through stuff <laughs> I'll be going through stuff, so I just encourage myself, I'm, I'm wiser now, mm -hmm. I'm stronger, I'm better. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've also seen that um, one of the major sources of, of trauma is uh, relationships. Mm. Um, these might be not, not, not uh, family relationships, but uh, romantic relationships, mm -hmm. where, you know, one minute one minute we run the next minute scanash and this one um face ash and this one and they people get into positions. Yeah. Or even crimes of passion. Yes. Shoot each other. Yes. Stab each other. Yes. Yeah. So and and for the people that don't uh, stab each other and, and shoot each other, these things uh are projected in even in their long-term relationships like marriage mm. where Kazi is not vulnerable or intimate with the husband because in any all together if I would think that relationships also need time like don't be there are people who are or they saying should, or they should be banned <laughs> Was there? The, <laughs> there are people who are serial daters, like Facebook, yeah. and, and, and or there are guys that are out there that uh, are actually on a mission to take virginity of a scan. Yeah, 
because of uh, self aggrandizement or yeah. some ego boost and but they are actually mental cre- challenge creating trauma yeah what do you have to say to all these issues that i've highlighted well foundationally if we move back in time <clears throat> i've got my own philosophies and some may not agree with me mm. but the wise man solomon says do not awaken love before time because love is stronger than death mm. yeah mm. so one would then ask the question so what is the time what is the time it brings us back to the original plan of god you know god creates a man in the garden mm. and this is a full grown man mm. he gives the man work to do mm. you know he says to the man i want you to be fruitful mm-hmm. to multiply mm-hmm. to replenish mm-hmm. to subdue and to dominate that's an assignment that the work is the man is given mm-hmm. inside the assignment there's also the concept of vision mm-hmm. because eden was only a small part of planet earth it was not the whole earth mm-hmm. so if you are being fruitful multiplying replenishing subduing and dominating what are you doing you're actually growing the blueprint to cover the whole earth creating eden everywhere. everywhere so the man had an had, had work to do the man had an assignment the man had a vision mm. then when all of that was clearly spelled out that's when god said it's not good for a man to be alone mm-hmm. right so already the time concept is showing us that for a person to be called a man they have to move towards wholeness and wholeness in that concept is that the man needs to have work to do the man needs to have a purpose the man needs to have a vision hmm. when 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 those things are fully functional and operational in your life it's no longer good for you to be alone you need a helpmate that's when eve came into the what into the picture mm-hmm. then the same bible says whoever finds a wife now that's that's wrong english because I, i would think whoever finds a babe a chick a girl a hottie or whatever mm-hmm. but whoever finds a wife i thought that when you marry someone then they become a wife mm-hmm. it also means the concept of a wholeness is being applied on the woman mm-hmm. there is something that she needs to become first so that she can be found So if a wholesome man finds a wholesome woman who is wife mm. I think we have less problems mm. than all this other drama that we have people are getting into these things before they become whole you find a young man is saying you know you know my uh, I remember one was dating a girl and uh it says I'm um, going for my first date uh can you borrow me a 20 bucks <laughs> I'm like why are you even going we, you see mm-hmm. and we tell them time and time again don't start this stuff until you're whole mm. okay let me show you something about the Jewish culture the Jewish culture a man would betroth a woman i like this woman then the man would go to the parents of that woman and say you know what i am going to prepare a place for her mm. then i'll come and take her Okay. That's where Jesus takes the statement in regards to the church, the second coming. He says, "Behold, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Mm-hmm. Then I'll come back and take my bride, the church." Mm-hmm. That's the whole concept. So these young men, they have not prepared a place for the woman because they don't even have work, they don't have purpose, they don't have vision. So how can you create a world or infrastructure for this woman to come and fit into? People are doing things half baked. people are doing things prematurely mm. you have to be whole so if somebody has not moved towards wholeness maybe they have inadequacy and then they they know that things are not working out most of them will then date girls that have a car mm. they'll date girls that have this that 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 because they're now trying to get an advantage over oh yeah mm. then after time with the way that a woman is wired the way that a man is wired mm. you're going to be emasculated 
bring my calm time. Da, 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 da. Yeah. 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 Then the next minute you're beating up the girl. Because your masculinity is being challenged. So you start beating up the girl. Why now? You see? Mm. So these are the dynamics of, of, of the... I just feel like people are getting into things before they are properly cooked and made by life. People are getting into these things raw. You know, you know, you, you said something very powerful there. And then at some point, you know, I sat down with myself and I was thinking good, with the scars that I have, I shouldn't have had them. Yeah. If I just waited the time, yeah. developed myself as a, as a young man, yeah. worked on purpose, worked on vision, yeah. trying to find myself. There are certain scars that I feel uh, we shouldn't be carrying in, in, in regard to relationships. Yeah. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't even be carrying those scars. Yeah. And it makes it a challenge for us to then uh, align to the woman or the man that God gives us because yeah. we allowed certain things without that, that shouldn't have happened to yeah. happen in, in 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 the most inappropriate time. So I I, I resonate with what you're saying, and I I believe that. Mm. I'll just give an example. Um, there's a lady who was giving a testimony. She's a very rich woman, big house and everything. Mm. Her story is amazing. She went back to do school like grade one mm. in her late 20s yeah and of course accelerated everything and whatever but now she has a phd mm. so she says initially she was married as a young lady a young girl mm. she was a housemaid and and so forth uh, before getting married and she said something painful she said you know what if you're a housemaid who else is going to marry you except a gardener so she got married to a gardener and um, life was hard. Mm. She had dreams. The gardener had settled for being a gardener. Mm. She wanted to do And the, 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 the long and short of it, at a certain time, they broke up. Mm. When they broke up, she was now actually, they were now eating off trash cans, going to restaurants and looking for food that has been thrown away. It was bad. That's when she said, I don't want to live this life. I don't want to be poor. Mm. Then she started fighting her way through. So, from that story, it's a painful story, but I think your property development company is now fully functional. You have got 20-year plans, 50-year plans, 100-year plans. You have got investments that you've started. They're not big, but you've started something like Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the London Stock Exchange, traveling the world and so forth. I don't know how life works. Mm. You'll attract someone. If that if that fits at that frequency at that level at that frequency you will attract somebody at that frequency mm. so most people are just they are not investing in themselves and you get better yeah they are not i hear people say i'm praying for a good partner no pray that and work on you mm. becoming good for somebody mm. else mm. you will attract good some people are selfish. They're like, I want a good person. I want a good person. I want a good person. Are you good yourself? You see? So we need a whole reorientation. We need a whole school, um, a new culture. We need time on TV specifically for these things. And, and it's permanent. And we're always talking about these things so that people save themselves from the, from the drama. So you guys, you know, don't start these things. Uh, now you can't even buy, uh, you know, a lollipop for your for your baby. And it's even worse for the girl child because once what don't go nobody wants you. You have to wait. Yeah, and it's we, now wait. We we have, and you, yes, I believe that God is a God of second chances. Mm. But there are certain things that even God will think would. <laughs> But I, I, I told I, I was I was sending my preachers and they were my my servants and they were teaching you these things. And you said the right word, time. Mm. Time. Let things happen in the fullness of time. Time. But yay! <laughs> ah, waiting. Ah. And and I, I I love what you just said. That was in in a, I I'm in that stage where I'm I'm developing as a young man, and my prayer has been that God make me the man that is the, the, the right man for the right woman. Yeah. I, I stopped praying, God, I, I need this, I need a woman like that. 
because you are taking off that responsibility you are saying it's my responsibility it's yeah. the viewer's responsibility to yeah. deal with the trauma to work on themselves Self. so now you are you are subcontracting responsibility exactly. to the other person you are now using this person as your uh, what you call the crutch yes. a walking stick you are using them as your pill as your medicine it doesn't work you be you will emotionally bankrupt yourselves it doesn't work you know There are guys who were bullied in school, like bullied, 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 and they have low self-esteem to the max. Mm. Guess what? They'll look for uh, what's her name, the Miss Supermodel Campbell, or whatever. Uh. Yeah, they'll look for someone <laughs> like that. That when she walks into the room, everyone's like, "Hey!" <laughs> They are doing it for themselves. That I used to be bullied. Now look at her. Look at her. But you've just attracted bullying. that went to private school because now every man wants the trophy yeah. that you have to prove to you that you're nothing you 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 are reinventing the same <laughs> wheel yeah. it's a it's a vicious uh, cycle yeah <laughs> now if she just goes to the bathroom who is she who is she with you brought this upon yourself you should have worked on being whole complete prior to dating your naomi campbell and 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 bishop you know there are instances where i'm sure you've come across these instances where a man will tell his wife but i don't want you to work uh, maybe the wife earns more than than he does and now he says it's not coming from a place of love it's coming from a place of insecurity, insecurity yeah saying good you oh, you shouldn't go to work yeah. and mkadze kuti avunze kuti why he can't he can't explain you should have projected into the future that life is ever evolving <laughs> Now AI is coming. So so gonna so, lose your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 like what we've just said instead of the person investing in themselves and becoming a better version. Yeah. And and reassuring themselves that I'm complete even without the other person. Yeah. Because it shouldn't affect you if, yeah. even if if you're making your own money and she's making her own money, it's fine. It's fine. So we I'm sure there are people who don't take that step to to re, to invest in themselves like you were saying. Yeah. Really invest in themselves. And sometimes the issue of wholeness. Mm. I might be earning less, mm. but I'm passionate. I love what I'm doing. I won't be bothered. Mm-hmm. Cuz I'm in my passion area. I will not be bothered. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh I think uh, we are running out of time. So uh, do you have any final remarks uh over this topic maybe we'll close in come go well I want to say to the viewers mm. that um sit down soberly mm. look inward mm-hmm. identify root problems and then begin to confront them personally before you try to blame the world and hate people mm. and think that this one owes you life is not like that it's your life mm-hmm. you don't have a spare life you've got one life, life yes you know so confront it mm-hmm. deal with your life mm-hmm. so that a better version of you comes out wow yeah well there you have it ladies and gentlemen uh it was an an honor uh hosting the bishop again i i think you can take a lot of lessons through throughout the video Uh special shout out to our sponsors for this video. Uh Carol's Kitchen. Uh they are into traditional cuisine. So you can visit these guys. They are located uh in Cranbourne. Queensdale. Queensdale. Yeah, along, Queensdale. along Longford. Along Longford. So just visit them and yeah. So um please do not do not forget get to subscribe, like and share. Uh we are on a road to 1000 subscribers. So that would really help us so uh from me and the bishop ah uh, We hope that you have been blessed by this episode of the Greatness Factor podcast. If you wish to get in touch with Tinashe, you may visit our website at www.tinashecmudanda.com or email us at tinashe@tinashecmudanda.com. At Till next time, stay blessed.